Okay, so today we are continuing our exploration of um, kind of front end technologies for for the shiny user. Um, this is uh, for those who might be watching on YouTube. Um, this is a book club that we're running through the R for Data Science um uh, slack, uh online community uh through the slack channel um we're working through a book called outstanding user interfaces with shiny by um david Gradjon, and we are currently on chapter three which is about um identifying dependencies um within a shiny application so what you know additional scripts or, or whatever your 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 app is uh, depending upon um Oliver Femi will be taking us through the content of that chapter and um yeah there's a few of us in the room now um so yeah so we're we're all being recorded for YouTube so you know um be polite everybody um yeah so uh I, how did you find this chapter uh, by the way I think uh, the chapter is interesting, but though it's quite short, it's a short chapter when I go through the whole chapter, it's quite short. Mm, yeah, yeah, cool. But, okay, so it's, but it's quite useful. I mean, the, 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 the techniques that are in here are quite useful in case you, you know, you've got clashes of dependencies or anything like that which can quite easily happen anyway i'll leave it to you to um talk us through the chapter are you happy for us to ask questions while you're chatting away um okay brilliant i'll i'll keep an eye on the chat um the text in the chat in case anything crops up but over to you no problem Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rosh. I think today we'll be looking at uh, chapter, we'll be discussing about chapter three uh, of the book, which is about discover shiny dependencies. So like for our, our learning objective, so we are going to understand uh, the various uh, dependencies uh, that are involved uh, in shiny because when we, when we start our Shiny apps, uh, the, there are some other dependency package in which uh, Shiny require them in order for it uh, to really work uh, effectively. So those are uh, what I will be looking at uh, in this chapter. So basically, as we all know in the book, as they do discuss, is that uh, every Shiny app, uh, a Shiny app, as we all know, that is a Shiny app help us at all to transform our R code uh, to HTML, which is going to be like the front end, the web application uh, in which uh, we are using. So they kind of say that uh, Shiny creates a HTML code for us. It is not enough to design beautiful uh, app with user interactions, but in order for us to be able to what, improve uh, this app, we need to really have uh, some kind of knowledge about the CSS to style this app, uh, to make this app to the look of the app uh, to be very effective. We also talk about uh, uh, JavaScript uh, there in the app. So they also explained uh, in the book that every app that when we have our default uh, shiny app, where we have the UI, the flute page, then we just have a, a text, which is just telling us like a, like a hello world. Then we have uh, the server parts, which is a function of inputs outputs then here we are removing the session so but when we start at uh, when we start uh, this app when we start the app though i have already run the app so i don't want to switch uh, back uh, to our studio i have the app running already in which i have pasted uh, the app here which which is the default app one in a way which i open up in the browser so once once we right click uh, this app and we click on the inspect elements because we are trying to see uh, the various uh, dependencies uh, that are that are involved uh, when uh, starting this app. So once we look at this, we can see that we are having the doc 
type, which is HTML, to show that uh, this is a HTML uh, tag. So when we look at the, the head, so if we collapse uh, this head, uh, because what we are looking at, we are trying to locate uh, those uh, dependencies that are uh, that are involved uh, when we start that hub. So when we look at uh, the head, we look at uh, script type, application, HTML dependencies. Uh, we can see that the one of the dependencies there, we have Java query version 3.6.0. We also have Shiny, uh, Shiny CSS. We can see the version there, which is uh, 1.7.4. We also have uh, Shiny uh, JavaScript and also the version 1.7.4 and also Bootstrap 3.4.1. Uh, so by default, uh, when we start, uh, uh, when we start, when we start uh, the Shiny app, so the Shiny app has three uh, three main. It has three main. Uh, dependencies, so which is the Java query, okay? You also have Shiny, which is a custom JavaScript and CSS. You also have a Bootstrap, which is a JavaScript and CSS. So those are the three, uh, those are the three main uh, dependencies uh, that are required by Shiny when we start, uh, when we start uh, the app. Uh, I don't know if anybody can ask any, is there any questions or anybody wants to add into what I just said before? Uh, we proceed uh, to the next part. Uh, maybe just a little comment from me. I, I hope it's not uh, pedantic, uh, but this part is called jQuery. Uh, when yes. you were calling Java Query, uh, yes. I just looked up and there is also another tool named Java Query. So Java Query. At... Yeah, there is another tool called Java Query. For the yes. Java programming language. Yes, 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 yes. We are but coming this to that. One we are over here is jQuery for JavaScript. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much for that. Uh... I think it's it, it's also important to know that I mean jQuery and Bootstrap um, are, are moving on. Um, separately from shiny they're, they're progressing and progressing and and, and shiny um uses bootstrap 3 which in 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 front end terms is uh you know a generation ago um there are ways to use more recent versions of bootstrap but i i think we'll come to that later in the in this chapter if not later yes yes yeah. Okay, so I'll just uh, proceed. Okay, so like uh, for the first part, uh, for the first part, uh, this section is mainly uh, the bootstrap, the bootstrap, uh, bootstrap. I, we all know, we all know that uh, bootstrap is what we re we require bootstrap in order for us to style, uh, to style our app to improve uh, the look, the look of the app. So bootstrap provide blocks and play layouts and interactive elements such as tabs, navigation bar, tooltip, bubble bars to customize Shiny app. So it's mainly um, uh, what we are, I grabbed from the book is that uh, we can use uh, the bootstrap to improve uh, uh, the, the look of the app, to style the app in such a way that once users are interactive, uh, to, to make the, the look of the app to be very, very uh, nice. So one of the great advantage of using if they do explain is that the responsiveness of the design that can work either on desktop or mobile. So once we have using we have used our bootstrap to style the use uh, the user interface. So even though we are we are opening this app maybe in our mobile phone or in the browser, it make it uh, very easy for us uh, to really interact uh, with the app. So they also. They also summarize all uh, the all the necessary elements uh, uh, in the bootstrap in this uh, in this uh, web page. I think they they do explain they do explain yeah so they do explain 
that will explain all the necessary bootstrap in this URL. So like uh, we can have an application, the title, which is the hello world. Then we have this, the sidebar layouts, sidebar panel. Okay, then we go into the server logic. So then when they complete up, when we want to, when we want to, when we want to use uh, the bootstrap, we can just define our function, which has a title, responsiveness, the team, the language. Then we can pass in the bootstrap function, which is like a div, the opening div, which is the class container fluid. Then we, here we have the title, the responsiveness, and also the team. So we can have this as a function. We can have this as a function. Then when we come uh, to the flute row, which has to do with the row, which is also a, a function. Uh, and this function, it can take any argument, can go in there, then the div, which a class, which has to do with the row to, to customize uh, uh, the row. So what is okay, we are also have a fixed page. I think these are all uh, the necessary uh, bootstrap in which uh, they do explain. This one has to be the fixed the fix page. So I don't know, uh, maybe Ross can come in. What is the difference? I want to ask, what is the difference between the fixed page and also the fluid row? Because I know, what is there any difference between the fixed page and also the fixed row and fluid row? What are the main difference in Shining? Um, well, uh, um. <laughs> Um, I, I think it kind of, it, it, it's, it, it's that, um, uh, so how does it work now? So for a, is it about how you specify it or is it from a user perspective? So in a, in a fixed page, you typically have to fill up every column and in, in oh, I'm not entirely certain how to explain it to be honest I very rarely used anything but fluid page really um but um maybe there's someone in the room who knows better than me maybe Lucio might know um um sorry uh yes but there is a um there's a layout guide um on in Hold on, I'll post it in um, where. So, for example, you um, yeah, some, someone else has posted it as well, which compares the different main kind of page layouts that you have in, in shiny applications. So like the, you know, the sidebar layout and um, things like that. Um, fixed page. I guess it's not responsive, like it has a fixed width, maybe. Yeah, so the um so the fixed Yeah, so it it's a bit more restrictive on how the elements on the page will move around as uh, um than than like uh fluid pages um yeah uh, I, I i don't know I, I i don't think i've ever worked with an app that used fixed page but um yeah um so i don't know off the top of my head to be honest but they're both built on the bootstrap page this this function within shiny aren't they so the um all both of those two page layouts are, are built on the same um um fundamental stuff i guess uh yeah but i don't i don't really know uh, well maybe in the link i just shared it seems to be explained uh, because uh, at least from, from what I got from the GitHub link where we see the, the code for fluid page and fixed page, uh, mainly the difference is what class is getting assigned to the container for the page. 
Uh, for fluid page, there was a class of container fluid. And if we go to the link I just shared, uh, that specific class, Bootstrap knows how to handle it. So I says right there, uh, you use a class and your container has a weight of 100%. But if you use only the class container, as we do for, for fixed page, then you're setting a maximum weight. So no longer 100%. So really it comes back to the, to the point of rest and about a uh, responsiveness. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your input, Lucio. I think I will just uh, proceed. Uh, what do we, yep. Okay. So this uh, part is about uh, the Java query, uh, the document object model uh, manipulation, uh, okay? Because uh, the Java query, I think it, it allows us uh, to, uh, it allows JavaScript uh, to developers to, in order for them to perform uh, the document object uh, model manipulation. That is, we are, we, are, we are interacting directly with HTML elements in, more, in a more, uh, user-friendly uh, manner than, than using uh, the pure uh, JavaScript. So here I have uh, two different uh, code snippets. One is for the JavaScript, and this uh, one is for the from Java uh, query. So what these two uh, code snippets are doing is that they are just simply uh, using uh, selecting select select uh, the button allow user to select a certain to click on the select uh, button. So we can see that we have this, which is from the, from, from, uh, so sorry. We have uh, this, uh, which is about, uh, uh, which is just for user to just, uh, to click me, we can see that between these two code snippet, we can see that uh, uh, the one coming from the Java uh, query, is a more user friendly because we can just see we have just three lines of code which is doing uh, the same thing, which is uh, which is giving us uh, the same out the same results because this is from the, the Java query which is just it has a dollar sign uh, my button which is going going to be the click uh, button which uh, the user will click then dot dot on which is always click. So the user is going to click that button, which is a function. Alert is going to pass in the alert that, oh, you click me. So it's going to alert the user that the user, you have actually uh, click, click the button. It's going to return this alert, uh, you click me. So this is the same, this is the same code uh, uh, using uh, the, the JavaScript. It's the same code, just like in Java query, but is more intuitive uh, for for we to to stick uh, with uh, the the Java uh, query part of the code. I think they do. There is uh, some explanation in which I do skip from here, which is in the book. There are some other explanation in which uh, they do explain in the book. Uh, they said uh, the Java query library provides support of. It provides support uh, for Shiny by shipping uh, the necessary contents. But nowadays, many website and framework uh, like the Bootstrap 5 that we all know, which like the BSLib tend to avoid, uh, they, they, they tend to avoid uh, the Java query so as to gain what? To gain performance that is speed. Uh, yet most Shiny and JS code still uses it and won't be removed anytime soon. But they say that Shiny still makes use of Java query, but it will, it will not uh, be removed because now they, they, they seem to move from Java query using the Bootstrap uh, 5 in order uh, for, uh, for we to be able to, uh, to style our user interface to make it, uh, to make it more uh, responsive, to make it more intuitive as the user uh, interacting, uh, as they are interacting. Uh, okay, I think, thank you very much. I think uh, yeah, Lucio. Yeah. So the, um, um, 
with regard to the jQuery and the the um uh what was it now the the performance issues uh using jQuery that um so there's few shiny apps that have as many moving parts as like a kind of um um you know like amazon.com or something like that or youtube or whatever um it's i i do wonder whether whether we necessarily need whether performance issues in a shiny app are likely to be due to jQuery. I, I'd be surprised if it's not the slowness of R or the slowness of other parts of the code that 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 uh, uh, may be bottlenecks. I imagine jQuery would be down the bottom of uh, of the list of things that might be causing your app to be slow. But yeah, I, I mean, I do like the syntax compared with the the JavaScript equivalent. But, um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to put it. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your inputs, I think. Uh, I, I was hoping if I could make a quick comment about what I think Trevor, uh, who asked about, uh, Trevin, sorry, uh, who asked about Python. Uh, could I share my screen for a couple, only two minutes to answer his question? Okay, let me stop sharing, there is no problem. Okay, so Trevin asked about which dependencies are using, uh, sorry, is Python for Shiny? No, sorry, Shiny for Python using. Uh, if turns out that if we access the link that I just shared, that is really oh. just an example really of a, a Shiny application using Python. Wait, let, let me open it again, I think I lost it. Uh, we can check actually which are the dependencies. So. Uh, well, we first have to wait for the app to, to run. There is this part on the right. Uh, and what they have set up uh, for, our, for us to be able to, to look at this app is to insert it via an iframe. So it's like a, 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 an HTML tag to contain a page inside another page. So now that we press Control Shift C in order to inspect this particular element, this input, we get over here, right? That there is an iframe that it's really the, the page for the app, for this shiny app. But if we access its head, we can see that the dependencies, uh, they are mostly similar to the ones that we are accustomed to in shiny for R, for example, jQuery version 3.6. But there is a difference uh, over here That's with true. Bootstrap using version 5. At least the, the example that I run. Uh, for this chapter, they were using Bootstrap 3.41. Yeah, I guess the question then becomes whether that Bootstrap 5, whether they've done anything extra to kind of quote unquote upgrade to Bootstrap 5 or if that's the, the, the default. Yes, uh, and also it's also a part of, uh, well, I wanted to share this part, uh, a comment about the, the author of Shiny, also for R and for Python. Uh, because they aren't going, I mean, they they aren't going to keep updating the jQuery version for possible future releases of Shiny. And it's mentioned over here. I think I didn't share it. Uh, let me share it again. And that's the fact that if one uses the uh, event listener for DOM content loaded, that is to perform some instructions, some code, once the HTML code uh, has already uh, being rendered into the page. Uh, well, this is a usual way to do that uh, with Manila JavaScript. That there's there seems to be some conflict when one when a person tries to perform this type of listener uh, with Shiny instead of just using jQuery. And uh, at least a few, the conclusion that I got from from what the author has said is that they're going to be limiting the use of the jQuery version or even possible future versions of Shiny. Um, I think the consensus is that it's going to be jQuery version 3. So it's mainly bootstrap. It, that will be the dependency that it does get updated. 
And that's yeah. it. Right? Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, um, Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so this part is mainly about uh, the custom uh, dependencies uh, uh, using JavaScript and CSS code. So these are uh, two library there. They do explain that. Uh, Right, we've got a little bit of a um, bug in the system somewhere. I'm assuming it's not just for me. Um, yeah, same, same on my yeah, right. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. So the um, there's there's a little uh, there's two final sections of this chapter, um, and so this is you know. Um, uh, what is this? The custom dependencies are so. Are these these will be, are we? Is he going to get back in? Do we think? Um, yes, yeah, sorry for that. My connection on our issue. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, if you want to take back over, I I I, I was trying to get up to speed with what you were going to say about because I wasn't sure whether you'd get back in. Um, brilliant. Right. If you want to take back over. Okay, so like I was saying that uh, in order for us uh, to customize uh, the, the layouts of the app, so we need to really understand the, the CSS and also the JavaScript parts in order uh, to fine tune uh, the layouts of our, of our user interface. Or it also helps us to register the inputs and outputs and handle every single input and output word action. Because in every UI, we need to have specific inputs. So we need to specify the inputs that, so we define those inputs and also we, we are also going to specify the outputs in our user interface that we are expecting. So, and once we go back uh, to the several parts of, um, of, our, of our app, we need to make sure we make proper reference uh, to that output so that once we, when we are starting the app, we can see uh, the outputs in our shiny app. So they also talk about uh, detailed mechanisms are studied. We are going to study detail more in depth about this uh, dependency when we are stepping into uh, chapter 12 and also chapter 13 of the book. We are also going to initialize control. The R and JavaScript communication as shown as we will be seeing in chapter 11.3.1. Uh, so we are going to cover uh, all those parts. So we are also going to be able to what, handle a lot and model uh, uh, and model what notifications. So the other parts uh, we are going to cover the other parts. In this uh, future uh, sections of the book that 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 has at, uh, something to do with the the shiny uh, uh, shiny dependencies. So I think the last example is just like an is just like a demo in which exercise in which uh, they do show uh, in the book. I think I have, I have a app in which I want to show, I don't know, I have an app, let me come back, I have an app. Okay, so in this app, it has the library, we have the UI, flute page, I have some slider inputs. I also have the server part, so I'll just, uh, I just start uh, the app, then I open in the browser so that we can inspect some of those elements I'm coming. So I'll share uh, this other screen. So let me share. To be sure I'm sharing the right screen. Okay, so this is just a simple app, okay, which is like an hello world. So if you look at the example in which they do explain in the book that we should start the app, we should open the HTML inspector, then we should remove the bootstrap mean.css and also the ion range slider.css. We should disconnect uh, this part uh, from the app. So 
I simply start the app. Okay, so we are looking for those tag. They are all in the, the add tag. Uh, CSS mean, we need to look for We need to look for the elements. I th I think you might be looking in the 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 the, the elements for the the book club notes there rather than the shiny app that you'd developed. So if you go onto a different tab, you know the one where your shiny app had opened. Yeah, this is it. Okay, okay. Right. This is it. Okay, so I inspect. Okay, so I look at the head. Um, these are the dependencies. So this is one of the tag, the bootstrap main.css. They do explain that we should delete this tag. So how do we delete it? So I just come here. Okay, so I, well, I just... I think if you right click on it, it okay. will... Um... No, if I right click, oh. there is no, it's oh, just cuts. Funny. So I'll just press delete or I can cut it. Yeah. So once I hit my delete, this is it. So I just delete this. Okay, so that tag is off. We can see the difference that our our hello world. We can see that we, if something. Let's go back. We can see that the hello world. This is what we have before. We can see the hello world there. So we look for the bootstrap main CSS again bootstrap main.css. So we'll look at the hello world, the difference so that we can see that there's something change. So once I delete this element, you can see that the hello world, it, changed, it changes that element. So the next one is the ion range slider.css. So I need to look for that element. I need to look for that element. Which is in the head also. Let's see the body. It's not there. Iron range slider or CSS. Did is is this hello world? Run yes. using them for an example. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, but does the shiny code underlying it include a slider? Because if not, maybe that's that dependency may not be loaded. Uh, the I think I included a slider. Is supposed to be there. There is a slider input. There is a slider input. Guys. That's funny because uh, can I? Would it be okay if I share my screen? Because I've yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Hold on. Um, share. So difficult. Hopefully, you can see this. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So. Um, I've just loaded the code for this book and then run the example that's stated in the exercise. Okay. And I get an, an app that looks like this loaded in the R Studio um, kind of window. Um, I can open that in the browser because it's usually yes. easier to do DevTools type stuff in the browser. Right, so now, um, 
inspect. I inspect that the head contains yes. for this thing. It does include that iron range slider. Was it the CSS? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. You have to delete that element. So what I would normally do, so in the browser, I can right click on things and then do delete element on them. So I should okay. be able to do that. And that's changed the structure of that slider. Um, yes. The other one was... Bootstrap main dot CSS. That one. So this should break a lot of the formatting. Certainly, yes, shiny's changed and stuff, and yes, yes, a lot of the, um, you know, things are starting to sit on top of each other in a way that they wouldn't normally. So, yes, um, I don't know how to get back to it, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen and you can take over. Um, yes, um, I think just the last part is just about uh, like the conclusion for the chapter. So main, mainly talk about that when working, when we are working with uh, Shiny, that Shiny, uh, it deals uh, with a lot of this. Uh, there are a lot of dependencies, okay? So there are a lot of uh, dependencies uh, in which Shiny required as we are working with the app. But by default, some of those things, they are not loaded when we start the app. So, but it mainly point out to that we should be aware that when working with Shiny, that there are lots of dependencies uh, that are required. Uh, and those, they are running at the back end, but it's better we have a working a knowledge and idea about uh, those uh, dependencies. I think, I think that is all I have uh, for the chapter. Thank you very much. That, that last point's quite interesting, though. So um, you can have uh, um, you can, your R code can include packages. Uh, say I might include um, uh, I, I don't know, um, like I don't know, some front end library wrapped up in an R package. But un, unless the um, Unless a, a a widget actually requires that package is presented to the user, it, the 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 JavaScript and CSS dependencies of it may not be loaded into their browser. I was quite sorry, I didn't realize that that was um, kind of done reactively as well. Um, oh, right. Uh, thanks. Has anyone got any questions in the? Um, I think Lucio noticed something additional when you remove some of the, the dependencies about how you lose the responsiveness of the page um, when the CSS files were deleted as dependencies, um, which is quite interesting. Um, I, I have a maybe a silly question, a fundamental question. So. It, am, am I right that when, uh, let's say on the R side, you know, I load the shiny library, is there no avoiding hat? Well, rather, I should say, is Bootstrap going to be part of it? Um, so I, I'm automatically getting Bootstrap uh, as kind of you know my my front end framework. Is 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 that right? Uh, I mean, let's say I I did something like just created a tag list. Uh, still 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 would I, I have Bootstrap even though I guess the tag list isn't loading the, the bootstrap dependency? I guess it's an empirical question, but I, I'm just kind of curious if anyone happened to know. Uh, you do have, I'm adding by default to use bootstrap, but like it is covered in the next chapter, or perhaps uh, taking a look at the link that I just shared, you can suppress, for example, bootstrap. You can even suppress jQuery, but I haven't tried suppressing jQuery. It may be a bad idea because a lot of the code for the user from depends on jQuery, but yeah, you can suppress Bootstrap and work with another uh, CSS framework or library. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the the link, Lucio. I I, I think I'd seen that in the next chapter is like an option for one of the frameworks they talk about, but I had I didn't realize it was a shiny 
a shiny function actually suppress where you could suppress the dependencies that's the, um i've actually i've just um taken the uh, you know the um the old what's it called old faithful app that you get when you initiate a new shiny app in our studio and deleted all the ui code and all the server code and just put in a paragraph that says hello world so very similar to what was presented earlier on in this and um bootstrap does get loaded uh even for such a like a really trivial um thing but boot that's because it's using this fluid page function which calls bootstrap page which kind of obligates you to load bootstrap i imagine um yeah um but yeah i think there there, there is a way of um what is it now there's a way of turning off bootstrap isn't there I can't remember the function. Do you put it into your UI code or something? Uh, yes, you use such suppress dependencies with the bootstrap argument as a string in the UI, and it, it doesn't get loaded into the page. Hey, wait. Is, um, is everyone still here? Uh, Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Cool. Um, right. Well, uh, thanks all of for, for, for doing the talk this week. Um, so the next, uh, chapter is about, um, specifying, well, probably specifying your own HTML dependencies and CSS dependencies and stuff. Um, so we've seen how, um, when you open a shiny app, um, it will load in the JavaScript and CSS for Shiny and for Bootstrap and for jQuery. Um, you can write custom JavaScript and CSS files that will be loaded up by, you know, in, into the browser when your app's running. If, if and and um, there are ways of specifying them using HTML tools. Um, so we'll talk about that next time. Next time, however, will be in three weeks' time, I believe. So uh, because um, because people, you know, different countries change their time zone at different times. So uh, th we have to have a couple of weeks' break at this end of the year and later on in the year to, to handle um, that. Because uh, it can just cause headaches um so yes i'll see you in three weeks time to talk about um html dependencies uh who's talking that time is it um i think looks like a jack yeah jack okay great um yes jack couldn't be here today but um yes i'm sure he'll be here that time um once again thanks ever so much for for doing the talk today and making the notes um and uh hopefully you've all learned a little bit and um Okay, thanks. For, I, I was I was very intrigued to see the the, the shiny and Python example. Um, That's quite interesting. And uh, right, okay, good. See you all next time. <laughs> and see you all next week. Uh, three weeks with time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.